a new patent to make the Chevy Corvette even faster, an angry group of Shelby GT350 Mustang owners, and yes, another Dodge Demon teaser. That's what we have in store on this week's Autoguide.com Weekly News Roundup. Autoguide.com has uncovered some interesting new patents from General Motors this week, an active aerodynamic system for the new Chevy Corvette. Now, odds are that this active aero system will show up on the new ZR1, although that isn't confirmed yet. According to the application, the system includes a set of adjustable aerodynamic aid elements mounted to the body of the vehicle, allowing it to adjust its aerodynamics. Specifically, an adjustable spoiler, air dam, splitter, diffuser, and shutter are all mentioned by the patent. It's this type of active aerodynamic system that allowed the new Lamborghini Huracan Performante to capture that Nürburgring record time, so expect the new Corvette to be even faster than the previous models. A group of Ford Shelby GT350 Mustang owners has filed a lawsuit against the American automaker over an issue with track days. The lawsuit, which has been filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida, alleges that Ford knowingly sold defective Shelby GT350 sports cars. Ford claims in the marketing that these cars are track ready, but these owners have not been having that experience. Owners are saying that once at the track, the GT350 can go into limp mode without warning in as little as 15 minutes as a result of overheating. Now the lawsuit only affects the base GT350 and cars with the technology package, and that's because those don't come with the additional coolers meant for the transmission and the rear differential that you get with the GT350 track pack. Now Ford obviously recognized this because for 2017, every single GT350 gets those upgraded coolers meant for the transmission and rear differential. So it's only owners of the original 2016 cars that are going to have this issue. We'll be sure to keep an eye on the lawsuit for you and let you know how it all turns out. Dodge has released another teaser for the Demon this week. This is video 11 out of 15, and it shows another new feature that is going to help the Demon at the drag strip. The video, called Lock and Load, shows the new transmission brake, which allows the Demon to rev the engine to optimal RPM for launch without having to worry about the car creeping forward or about holding it back with the brake pedal. That's because the transmission essentially engages drive and reverse at the same time, allowing for the engine to preload the drive line and strain against that lock transmission rather than against the car's brakes. When the driver releases the transmission lock, which is controlled by one of the paddle shifters, the car will rocket off the line. And like all Demon teasers, there are some more mystery numbers for us to try to decipher this week. Now, first of all, when it shows the shot of the info cluster, you can see 7.57 in the top left corner and 8.15 in the top right. Now, we're guessing that the standard Demon will have 757 horsepower, while once prepped for the drag strip and likely using different fuel, the engine will make 815 horses. We'll have to wait and see if that's right. There's also another shot of the license plate which shows a bunch of numbers and we have no clue what they mean. So make sure you come back to find out more on April 11th when the Demon is finally revealed. Who would have ever thought that a patent for a bearing would be interesting, but that's exactly the case this week with a new Toyota filing. The brand has protected a special bearing design, but that's not the important part. What's cool is that that bearing is going to be used in an all new electrically boosted supercharger. Electric superchargers use stored energies to help get that supercharger up to speed, eliminating extra strain on the engine and allowing for the boost to be built quicker. Now it's awesome to see that Toyota is working with electric superchargers and we're excited to see where they end up, which at this point is still a mystery. So it's safe to say that this electric supercharger will probably end up on some type of sports car, so we can make some educated guesses based on that. First of all, there is the new Supra which is coming, which would be a pretty cool fit for an electric supercharger. There's also the gorgeous Lexus LC, which is destined to get a high performance version, the LCF. And you can't tell me that a supercharged 5 liter V8 wouldn't be badass in that car. 
And there is one more option, which actually seems like the most likely. Toyota recently released the Yaris GRMN, a little hot hatch that uses a supercharged 1.8 liter four cylinder. Now this would be disappointing, but there's also a chance that none of the public will ever get to use this technology as Toyota also has a Yaris going into the World Rally Championship this year and that car could definitely benefit from this technology. All you Civic Type R fans, turn up your speakers because Honda has finally let us hear what the new Type R will sound like. Unfortunately, it is a minute long video with only about six seconds of engine revving, but still it lets us hear what this little two liter turbo is gonna sound like when it's screaming at high RPM. As a refresher, the Type R makes 306 horsepower, 295 pound-feet of torque, and Honda says that in North America, it's gonna come with a starting price in the mid $30,000 range. McLaren is also teasing us this week with its most powerful car ever, which is going to act as a successor to the famous F1. The car, codenamed BP23, is expected to arrive in 2019 and it will sit atop the range of McLaren supercars. Probably the coolest thing about the BP23 is, just like the F1, it will have a center mounted driver's seat with two seats for passengers in the rear. Now just 106 of these cars are going to be built, each one costs at least $2 million and of course they're all sold out already. The first spy photos have hit of Subaru's new seven seat SUV and it looks, well, basically like a Subaru. The SUV is expected to be called the Subaru Ascent and it will be the largest vehicle that the brand has ever produced. Now styling compared to the concept version of this vehicle has been toned down and essentially it just looks like a big Subaru Forester. Now it's possible that we could see the new Subaru seven seater in a few weeks at the New York Auto Show. Thus far, the brand has only confirmed that it will be on sale by early 2018, which also leaves the door open for a debut in Los Angeles in November. We had another busy week here at the Auto Guide offices as well, as a few of our editors were all over the place driving new cars. Now I recently had the chance to review the new 2017 F-150 with the 10 speed automatic. Features editor Sammy Hajasat has also been busy reviewing the new 2017 Toyota 86, and taking a look at the new Audi RS3. And we leave you this week with some epic footage of the fastest ever lap around the Nürburgring by an all electric car. NIO, China's foremost maker of crazy electric vehicles, has released this video showing its supercar, the EP9, making it around the Nürburgring in seven minutes and five seconds. Now, as I said, that is the fastest ever time for an electric car and just 13 seconds off the pace of the fastest ever production car to lap the ring. Now, of course, this car's performance credentials are crazy with at least 1300 horsepower making it to the wheels and the car is capable of generating up to 2.53 lateral Gs in the bends. Now what you're seeing in this video is pretty amazing, but it's not really anything you haven't seen before. However, listen closely. Do you hear that? That sound is the future of motorsport. 